Now, in just a moment, Michelle Heaton and her husband Hugh will be talking about the impact the menopause had on their marriage. First, though, here's a reminder of the huge life decisions that they've already shared with us. I am a carrier of the BRCA2 mutation gene, which basically means that I have an 80% risk of breast cancer and a 30 to 40% risk of ovarian cancer. So I'm going to go down the route of a double mastectomy. You are remarkable. You're my steel magnolia. I love that's, you. That's what I say. You're my wee steel well, magnolia. Thank you, You're a smashing, smashing girl. To even consider having a hysterectomy before I had had children was for me just not possible but even now that i have two beautiful children to um to have to you know decide that that's it it's still a hard decision Well, Hugh and Michelle join me now goodness me you've been through it both of you we're just looking back at that and thinking it feels like a lifetime ago. I know. And you've been through so much, you're still here. Yes, Doing and that's the well. whole point. Doing and they well. were a lot quieter back then. <laughs> yeah. But you went through, obviously, because of the surgery, you went through real early menopause. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a really tough thing to have to deal with for anyone because we don't talk about it enough. We've tried on this show mm -hmm. to talk about it a lot. But people that don't talk about it are men. They really don't. Guilty as charged. Yeah, yeah. I know, because it's hard. You don't know what to do. Your wife's going through this, and you're, I guess that sometimes you must have felt quite helpless. I think for me, when, when we were going through menopause, I didn't really know what to expect. Like, it was only when Michelle wrote her book that I actually Googled what is menopause and yeah. to understand it properly. And then I think we were four years into it. Mm -hmm. And then when I was looking at it, I was able to see all the stuff that actually, had I actually done my research, I would have understood a bit more about mm -hmm. it, because it isn't something you go to work with or to talk to your friends and go, well, my wife's going, going into menopause. Boys wouldn't be talking about that yeah, amongst just, each other, would they? It's they just, just something that doesn't yeah. come up, and I've never sure. heard anyone talk about it. So for me, I was just getting on dealing with it, and it's obviously mm -hmm. extremely hard on Michelle to go through it. And I was just trying to support as best I can, but it, I don't think we knew what we were dealing with, mm -hmm. and it really caught us off guard a lot. Very, very difficult, because it's almost like you, you lose your wife, you know, I mean, you kind of, because it, it has terrible effects on you, and it particularly bad for you, wasn't it? It was really hard. Yeah, I think with us obviously being young, going through it, yeah. um, and with the kids being so young as well, mm. um, and I don't have that, I suppose, that group of women around me that are going through it at the same time. Exactly. So it's really hard, yeah. it's, like, what, it's kind of like Hugh saying that you can't speak to people. It's hard for me to bring it up in conversation with my girlfriends, not mm. that they're not kind and considerate. But that's a right downer on a conversation when I'm out at the pub and I need to leave because I'm, I'm really hot and, yeah. and, and I can't get myself just calmed down. Mm. Um, and, and it's upsetting for my mum to talk about because she doesn't expect her daughter to go through it so early. And I think what, what kind of kills us most is, is the kids seeing those moments where I am really erratic, yeah. down, emotional, when nothing... Hugh can do or anyone can do can get me out of it and I can't even explain that and my kids see it mm. they shouldn't have to see that does okay. that make sense it makes perfect sense I think you're very hard on yourself but it does make perfect sense it, it really does and you Hugh you've tried really hard to be supportive yeah but no do, do you think sort of in a way now you wish you'd know now you know, back then, you wish you'd had all that knowledge. Yeah, I think looking back, there's definitely a lot more I could have done. Yeah. I think at the time, with Michelle had her operations, I presume she'd recover and life would go back to normal. Okay. And then all this other stuff came, like obviously mm. the mood swings and the, where Michelle really struggles in trying to get hold of herself. And mm. she, she, she's lost a bit of herself, but she struggles to understand that that's part of, of life. But then throws that rejection back towards me quite a lot mm. because she's struggling, yeah. which then obviously... Puts, makes me question our, our relationships yeah, sometimes. Yeah, it's been tough on you. I mean, you're very strong. You're very strong yeah. level. But it does, it does make it difficult because especially with you, your, your self-esteem was on the floor, mm -hmm. your confidence goes, mm -hmm. intimacy then goes, mm -hmm. and that's really hard on both of you. Yeah. I'd say kind of rejection has been one of the biggest things because I, I can't stand people in my, in, in my area yeah. when I'm going through those, those moments. Sure. And he just wants to hug me. And makes everything okay. Yes. But and that's, that's the worst. Yeah, and but like, you don't really want yeah, that. Yeah. And then you think, hang on a minute. Exactly. I'm trying to help here yeah, and yeah. you're rejecting me. Exactly. Sort yeah. of. Oh, that's true. And, and then you understand how so many relationships break down mm. because the partner feels rejected. You don't know why you're rejecting them. And I think that that's the main reason why 
I've asked mm. you to talk about this so much <laughs> because I think there's a lot of knowledge out there that needs to be handled by the men to realise that it's not them because I think a lot of men try and fix it. Yeah, and sometimes some, you can. Exactly. Sometimes you just can't. Mm -hmm. do, would you, anybody watching this, you, and I know so many, we get such a huge response anytime we do anything on the men pose, what would your advice to the men be? What do you think they should do? Yeah, so I think... Because you've been there. Yeah, well, you know. well, five years through it. I think yeah. uh, definitely do your research is definitely yeah. what I'd say. I think it's obviously very hard on your partner who's going through it. But I think there's an element where you need to man up a little bit and be supportive and yeah. try kind of see what is just... If it passes, because there's some days Michelle just can't get hold of herself and she's mm. not Michelle. And it passes. She's still the woman I married and I love. Mm. But I have to just see that that isn't her and it's sure. just part of it. Uh, but you definitely have to do your research and just be supportive mm. and, and just let the, your partner know that you love them. And that's, I think that's, and that's yeah, all you can do sometimes. But, but accept that if they reject you, it's not you, it's just mm -hmm. that they're out of sorts with them. Yeah. And, and it's, it's hard to watch how much it's impacted her as a partner. Very much. I mean, sometimes you were worried about leaving her with, with the kids mm -hmm. alone because, you, because she, you know, your mood's very erratic. They were. Yeah, there's been some mornings where like Michelle would get up and as soon as I get up, I could just feel the, the mood come towards me and I was like, oh, yes. here we go. Mm. And, and then you'd be with young kids and that would just escalate escalate more and more sure. and then I'd have to go to work and you just feel so bad leaving Michelle because she's just out of control at that time sure. and it passes but it's just you do worry and you just want to stay there but it's not always easy. No. You've got a remarkable relationship, you really have. I mean, for you, I'm very you, lucky. No, but you are, but, and you're able to talk, I mean, you've, you really have got an amazing... I family. know. But that you're able to talk about it, that you're happy to talk about it, to me, yeah. is phenomenal, because men do not do that, they just won't. Yeah, yeah. and we, um, we spoke to a few men recently about how they were going through it and how they were supporting their partners, and so many men are lost, yeah. and you could see they're just broken and they don't know what to do. And I think that support groups and men talking about it a little bit more might actually help relationships yeah. last a bit longer because it's not necessarily the relationship that's breaking down. It's the fact that they're not communicating anymore. No, absolutely. And I can also recommend your book, Hot Flush. What a great read. Thanks. So honest. And obviously there's a bit in by you, Hugh, which mm -hmm. really resonated with me. It's absolutely brilliant. I recommend that. You should look Thank it up. You, it's Mary. very, very good. Thank you for coming in. You talked about sometimes feeling broken. I think you two are unbreakable. I don't want to put a jinx on anything. I think that. <laughs> but I really do. Honestly, I really do. Watching you, you know, talking to you beforehand, you've got a remarkable marriage. Thank you. Absolutely yeah. remarkable. Thank you for coming and he's, today. And he's, and he's very nice to look at. <laughs> well, there is that. There is that too. <laughs> no, but, you know, it fine. shouldn't matter. But it does. <laughs> Thank you both very much. And for more information and advice on the menopause, please, please visit our website.